If you'd like to start a career in data, here are some awesome tips. Every experience that you've already had can help you become a great data professional. And all you need to do is add a little bit of exposure to some data skills, the right the data community, meeting people, meeting hiring managers, but you already have a lot of experience. And if you've got interest in data, it's actually going to be a really great fit for you to serve the same industries that you already care about, maybe that you already have experience in, but with your new data skills. So if you bring industry domain on top of that data, you will be a much more powerful data science team member. You don't have to call yourself data scientist to be part of a data science team. So figure out how you can bring that industry domain into the data science group to make it more powerful. Yeah. One of the most important parts for data engineering is understanding building at scale and doing so with the business in mind, being able to come up with really robust data models to suit multiple business cases. It's not solely about the technical development, although that's really important too, because you want to build performant data models and optimize those. But I would say also having an appreciation for the business. If folks really want to get started with this, I know a lot of times the complaint is I can't get a job because I don't have experience or I don't know where to start because I can't pick a domain. And there are so many domains out there. I don't know what I like. So if you can either share your stories or let the audience know any tips and advice that you have for actually getting started. First of all, you can start getting experience even before you have the job. There are a lot of opportunities to leverage your current job or your personal time, just a little bit on the side doing a personal project that can get you started. But ultimately your goal is to get in the race to, to start a full-time job in data. And the way to do that is to just remember that a hiring manager is a person just like you and me. They want to hire somebody that they can trust to do the job. And so your goal is to show them that you can be trusted, whether that's by using the little opportunities in your previous roles to do data projects, whether that's by taking the initiative and upskilling yourself, doing a personal project, connecting with that person on LinkedIn, reaching out, having a coffee chat. The goal is to tell your story, show why you uniquely contribute with domain experience or data skills, the ability to do the job. And ultimately, after you've done that, you've connected with people and convinced somebody that you can help them solve data problems, then you're going to get a job. So the question is not really, how do I get my first job, but how do you do the right things to make it so easy for someone to see, hey, they would be great in this data job. I used to run quite a bit and bike. And so I looked at, I think I, what did I Google? Like Tableau, because I was just getting started with Tableau 8 when it was, when I was starting. And I Googled like Tableau Strava or something like that, or Tableau running. And I found the Strava connector and I built a project that made sense to me. And that was really helpful. And the reason why that specifically was helpful was because I had explored the AdventureWorks database from Microsoft. And I looked at a lot of forums and to be fair, like at the time there wasn't as much, I didn't feel like there was as much guidance as there is now, eight, 10 years later available on the internet for people who are just getting started. But the AdventureWorks database, like I just didn't know what questions I would ask, even though all the guidance was just start with asking questions. And so when I started searching for things that were interesting to me, I had a place to start because it was where I would be curious. And I think that's such a powerful story because we all have areas in our life that is maybe non-technical where we have a passion. Like I also love running, so I'm obsessed with analyzing my own running data. I recently moved over to Strava, which for those who, are, who might not know, Strava is an app that you use to track your workouts. I love that you were able to take that data, create some sort of project with Tableau, which is also the tool that I started with. And I think that's very encouraging to the audience that are probably sitting wondering, what data do I use? Where do I get started? There are so many places where you can get data. You can, there's even you can get data from Google. They have a place where you can just literally look for data sets. I can use myself as an example, being from manufacturing, as an industrial engineer, of course, you centered around data. We we're talking about statistical process control to make sure that your processes don't go out of whack. You're achieving some sort of quality result. But before I joined Fang, I looked for 
business use cases where data would be key to improving these use cases. For example, I was running pricing optimization as a product manager, and I was supporting a team of sales folks, and they, ha they were having difficulty finding data to build some sort of quotes for their customers. It was B2B. So I initiated this project to shorten their time in terms of how long it takes them to find data. And the tool that I used was Power BI. So Power BI was my point of entry into this data world. But at the same time, next to me, I had my colleague who was also using Excel to model the manufacturing process. So we're in a setting where we're pulverizing chemicals and mixing it with liquids. And he was modeling what would be the final size of these particles at the end of the mixing procedure using Excel. That's exactly what, you know, data science do with Python, et cetera, et cetera. So do not underestimate the power of the tools that you already have at your hands, like Excel and try there. And it, it's only a matter of transferring that knowledge onto another programming language. And then you go from there. So find data at work, if not find data on the internet. So two things came to me that I did. And the first one is just look back at your experience and see what you've already done and how can you recast it or rebrand it with an analytics lens. And in me looking back in 23 years in the Marine Corps and saying that when I started out, I was a logistician and I was reading these pages of this very particular code to the Marine Corps, but it was reading code and it was breaking down the maintenance status of our fleets of equipment and briefing to a stakeholder, which is my commanding officer, where, what trucks were up, what we could take to the field, which weapons were functioning. And that right there is analytics. I'm looking at an unintelligible stack of paper crap that nobody but me could understand and <laughs> translating it for a stakeholder. And then various other things throughout the career that I look back and said, they didn't call it analytics at the time, but that's exactly what it was. And then the other thing I would say is just doing work. There's no, if you recast it in a, another arena, it wouldn't make any sense to you. You can't say, I can't cook because I've never cooked anything before. Yeah, just buy like a mix from the store, read the directions and do what it says. There are thousands of platforms out there now that some free, some paid that trumpet in huge letters. This is the way to get into analytics or data science or anything, some of the paid ones are good. They're, they're a little more curated than the free stuff, but the free stuff's out there for you. So just get on YouTube and, and look up some of those channels. If you're strapped for cash, it's going to mm -hmm. take a little more legwork on, on your end, but you can do it for free. If you think this content was useful, please go ahead and subscribe.